Welcome everybody, this episode we are going to talk about how we can create a button to automatically filter our data in some way. But before we get started, special thank you and shout out to our sponsor of this video. Are you looking for a file uploader that works well with React? FileStack covers everything from simple file uploading to image transformations. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. To get a quick preview of what this could look like, this is what we're going to be building in this episode. Right now we have a list of customers, we already built that in previous videos, and we have orders. You have the ability to filter by customer ID with this filter button, or you know by customer name. However, I want to be able to go from this customers list and just click one of these to get that person's orders. We can go back to the customers and then click John Smith and just get John Smith's orders. This is made possible with this query param, which is going to be used to set a default filter value for this table. We could then share this link with somebody if we wanted to share a preview of just John Smith's orders and it'll automatically bring you to that filtered table. This is going to introduce a lot of interesting things because now we're going to talk about how do we send information from a Next.js link through that URL parameter and then take that URL parameter and automatically apply it to a table. I'm pretty excited for this one and I hope you are as well, so let's just get started. Here we are at our current application state. Currently, we do not have a customers button over here on the left. These buttons don't actually go anywhere. We can visit slash orders and we do have the ability to enter in some kind of filter but there's no connection to a URL parameter so we're going to build all of these things now starting with the links over here on the left that seems like a pretty easy place to start after that we'll learn how to define this filter as a default when this page is loaded only in the scenario where we pass in some customer ID to filter the data Okay, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just focus on one thing at a time. Let's go ahead and add that orders link back in, which we commented out in an earlier video. There we go, thinking ahead. So let's go ahead and go into our components and then into our theme. And here you can see we have our shopping cart and our orders. So let's uncomment this and make sure it looks correct. So far so good. Now we will still need to surround this in a link. So let's do that now. And we'll take the closing tag, bring it down here. This is going to go to slash orders. And let's test it out. We click orders and it brings us to this table. So it seems to be working. Now let's talk about the next logical thing, which is this button. Let's go ahead and find where this is being rendered. We will find this inside of an individual customer. We have this button right here. So what we can do is we can surround this with a link. And this is where we can pass in some additional settings to say what kind of parameters we want in that URL. So let's go ahead and instead of saying href is being equal to some string, we can actually set it equal to an object. So we will use one set of curly braces to say, hey, we're going to have some JavaScript code here. And then another set to say, hey, this is a JavaScript object. Now we're going to want to import this, again being careful to grab the next version. And then what we can do is we can pass in some additional settings, specifically query. And actually, I forgot an important step, which is if we go back to our theme, you can see we have this selected ability for each one of these except the orders. So what I will do is I will actually take this and include that here. That way, they should all appropriately highlight. Making sure, of course, to change this to slash orders. Now let's go back to what we were doing. Sorry to get distracted there. I just want to make sure I didn't forget to do that. Query is going to take an object with any properties that we want to pass to the next page. So if we wanted to pass, say for example, the customer ID, we could just define that property on this object and then grab the customer from this iteration of this loop and say customer.id. And then we will just say to string. So far so good, but this doesn't actually say where to go. It says what we want to pass to the next page. And since we no longer have that string here, we actually need another property here, which is called path name. This is the original path string that we would normally use when we don't have all of this custom stuff. So this is going to go to slash orders. Let's test this out. We should be able to click this and you can see customer ID is equal to John Smith's ID. This one ended in C16. We can try a different one just to see, and this one is C17. So it seems to be working. 
What we can do now is we can add some extra information to this table, such as the order ID and the customer ID, and then learn how to set the default filter so that only the orders with the customer of this ID are being shown. Let's go ahead and jump over to that table, which is actually not this orders page. This was one of the default files when we installed this theme. Rather, we're going to be looking at this orders index.tsx. And inside of here, we have our data grid with the rows and columns. Let's go ahead and define a couple more columns here. I think we originally had an ID, but we removed it. I think I want to go ahead and add that back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste two more objects here. And I'm using two because I want this first one to be the order ID, and then I want the second one to be the customer ID. So the field for the order ID is just going to be ID, and then the header name is going to be whatever you want, such as order ID, and you can adjust the width as you please, and we're going to delete editable. Now when we do this, it might crop off some of that information, but it is good to know that we can click it, and that'll allow us to select everything, so it is still very easy to grab all of that information. So you don't necessarily have to have the full ID shown. So 100 width works for me, however you can adjust as you please. The next thing I want to do is grab the customer ID, which I will have it called customer ID, and then the header name, we'll just have an English version of that, so customer space ID, and I will also go with a width 100 here, and not editable. Now we haven't actually built in any functionality to save edited content, but this is one of these experimental features. You can see experimental features, new editing API is set to true. This was all there by default when we brought this in, but we can look into that later if we wish. But for now, the ID shouldn't be editable, so it just makes sense to leave that off of there. Taking a look now, we have the order ID, the customer ID, which is currently blank. I'm gonna talk about how to get that to be filled. Then we have the customer name and the description and the price. So it's going to be very similar to how we got the customer name. The name is not directly on that object, so we just have to add it in as we are building out these rows. So these were the original rows, the default data. We don't need that crap. What we want to look at is this props.orders. So props.orders is filled in from get static props if you're using Next.js. And here is where we are defining those order rows. So we've basically been ignoring TypeScript at this moment. We will probably go back through and add in TypeScript so don't worry about it too much for right now. I just wanna get this working. But what we can do is we can add a new property to this row, which is going to be customer ID, and that is going to come from the customer object underscore ID. So taking a look now, let me just do a quick refresh, and there the data is. And you can see there is some repeating values, which makes sense, because these are both Sal Brown. She's going to have the same customer ID. You could do the same filtering concept by name, but ID is safer because you're not going to have repeating values across customers. Okay, so far so good. The question is now, how can we take this information and apply it to this filter? So let's go ahead and do it manually real quick. We'll say filter customer ID equals, and then we'll take this value, paste it here. And that is how we can get all of the orders for Sal Brown by her customer ID. And we basically want to say, hey, when we visit this page, by default, just automatically do this filter. And there's actually an easy way to do this with the data grid inside a material UI. So where we are passing all these different attributes, another one we can use is called initial state. And this is going to allow us to assign an object with a filter property. So we can say filter, and the nesting here is a little intense, so that's going to be an object, which is going to have a filter model, which is also an object, which is going to have an items, which is an array, an array of objects. This is where we're going to define that filter. So we'll say column field is the customer ID, and then we're going to say the operator value, which will be equals. And then what we actually want the value to be is going to be called value. And for now, I'm just going to paste in an ID because I'm going to show you next how we can get that from the URL. But let's just see if this works. This means that when we visit this page for the first time, it should automatically show Sal Brown's orders. And even on page refresh, that information is shown and we can't see any other orders unless we clear this filter. So you could go in here and X out of this if you want. 
Now these three things here coordinate with those three properties on that object. So we have the column, the customer ID, that is the column field here. It's the property name in this scenario, but it's the English version here. And the association for that is defined right here. So that's how it knows that the customer space ID goes to the customer ID field. So that's why that works. And then we have the operator equals and the value. So that is where you define that. Now the question is, how do we, instead of hard coding this value, get it from the URL? Well, that's going to require a hook. So we're going to say import, and this is called use router from next slash router. And then we will create a const for this. So inside of our component next page here, we will say const router is use router. This is going to be an object that has a bunch of information. So let's go ahead and console log it real quick. Taking a look at the console, we can see an object here. And inside of this object, we have a bunch of information, including this query object, which currently actually doesn't have anything because I didn't pass in anything to the URL. So let's go back to the customers and view one of these orders. That will include the customer ID in the URL. And we will grab the most recent object so now we can see this query has a customer ID and that is that value. So we'll just traverse into query and then into customer ID. That shouldn't be too bad. What we will do is we will just destructure and instead of having a router here, we can have query. And we can actually go one layer deeper and just take the customer ID coming from use router dot query. That should work. So now we can console log the customer ID if we wish right there and that is what we will use for the value customer ID let's check it out we'll go to the customers we will click one and there we go we have the orders for John Smith let's try it for Sal Brown and there are the orders for Sal Brown and you can see those IDs being printed in the console all right so are we done well it works pretty good but there's a few issues so specifically if we refresh you can see it lists all the orders and this customer ID is ignored. This took me some time to figure out what was going on and when I console logged the customer ID, I would see that that value was being retrieved, but it was initially undefined. So it was undefined and then the table was being rendered with no customer ID for the filter. So it was just showing everything. One idea I had for this is if there is an initial state for customer ID, great, go ahead and use that. But once we are sure there is a value for customer ID, we can use filter model directly on here. And this is going to take the same style of object. So I will copy this and paste. And this will cause the correct filter to be applied. So if we go to our customers, view one of them and do a refresh, You'll see a brief flash of the full table, but once that customer ID has been loaded, it switches to just showing the info for John Smith. Everything else appears to be working as you would expect. So yeah, that is how you create a filterable table. I thought of various different ways of doing this and I didn't have much luck. Something you might want to look into is use router will also return an is ready, but I wasn't having too much luck with that for some reason. So I decided to go with this route. Hopefully this has been a fun little exercise of filtering data. I definitely enjoyed it. I thought this was fun. It makes our app seem pretty useful, 